certain things got to be said. Certain things just got to be said. So if it got to be said, I might as well say it on a multitude of topics. Buckle up, y'all. Here I come. Stephen A. Smith Show right now. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the latest edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show coming at you as I love to do. At least, at the very least, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday over the digital airwaves of YouTube. Thank you for joining me. As usual, I'm in one of my studios. Thanks to my official studio sponsor, FanDuel Sportsbook. FanDuel, the official sponsor of the Stephen A. Smith Show. Before I get into anything, as always, I take a moment to extend my sincere gratitude to all of y'all. My followers, my subscribers on my YouTube channel, the Stephen A. Smith Show, has officially exceeded... 370,000 over a seven month period. Can't thank y'all for the love and support enough. Keep it coming. I'm growing at over 1,400 subscribers per day. That's love right there. That's what love is. That's what love is. Okay. So I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for the support. You keep the love coming. I'm going to keep on coming. There's a bevy of topics that I want to get into today. And by the way, while you're at it and you're busy supporting me, don't forget to go back and grab my, um, my memoir, uh, Straight Shooter, a memoir of second chances and first takes, a New York Times bestseller, I might add. New York Times bestseller is the creme de la creme. So once you're a New York Times bestseller, you're forever a New York Times bestseller. I've made that list. Couldn't have happened without y'all. So once again, I'm very, very gratified. If y'all heard a noise that came out of this for a second, that's my sloppy ass producer that's tripping over chairs and shit, getting in the way, knowing that I'm giving up my opening monologue. Get it together, Greg. Get it together, okay? So I just want y'all to know it wasn't me, but that's how it goes because I'm surrounded by a bunch of people here, right? Here's the deal. We got a lot of stuff to get into. The firing of Josh McDaniels by the Las Vegas Raiders in the National Football League. Dabo Sweeney, the head coach at Clemson University, speaking out, calling out callers. Very emotional. This is what a 500 record would be for a national championship. These are the kind of motions they would evoke. We'll get into that in just a second, of course, Cheating scandals taking place at the University of Michigan. That's something that can't be ignored. But I'm going to tell y'all all of that is going to take a back seat. I usually don't go this route. I usually don't go this route. But you know, there's a lot of women that watch Stephen A. Smith show. There's a lot of ladies that want, dare I say, the male perspective. As a matter of fact, if you're the view, you should take notice. You, know, you might want to add me to the show from time to time. You know what I'm saying? You know, male perspective sitting next to Joy Behar, Whoopi Goldberg. And male perspective might help you out. Might help you out. Shade room, all you ladies up in there. Might help you to have a male perspective. Might help you to have a male perspective. And I'm going to give you the latest example because, see, my perspective is a little bit different. I didn't want to go here. I didn't want to talk about I didn't want to open this show talking about Michael Jordan's son, Marcus, and Scottie Pippen's ex-wife, Larza Pippen. You know, Real Housewives of Miami, you know that? You remember her? You know, see, she's 48, he's 32. They've been hooking up for years, and now they're in love, and they're talking about engagement and marriage, and he's talking about multiple marriage or wedding ceremonies because the Jordans are private and all of this other stuff. As somebody who knows the Jordans a bit, he's absolutely right. They are very, very private. And since I've known Michael Jordan for years, I can assure you his privacy will never, ever in a million gazillion years be violated by me. But what I can tell you is that this is a story that's percolating and there's a lot of perspectives that people are throwing out there and they're throwing shade on these folks. And I got to admit to you, I got to come to the defense of a few people, okay? A few people, not everybody, but a few people, I have to come to their defense. Now, before I do that, this is Michael Jordan's son, Marcus Jordan, with his purported fiance, Larza Pippen, with Marcus talking about their love and the potential nuptials. Take a listen first, please. When's the wedding, you guys? It's in the works. Is my uh, is my go to saying right now. You know, I don't think we have like a, a date. We're still talking about locations and how party size and all of that stuff. So it's not really uh, concrete yet, but it's it, it'll happen. Do you want your dad to give a toast at your wedding? How does this work? 
Yeah, you know, look, I was the best man at his wedding and so and the best man at my brother's wedding. And so obviously we'll keep that tradition going is my my thoughts on it. I want in. I want I, know, I want video cameras there. Now that you know, I've been on the on the housewives in Miami, you know, all the producers are inquiring around, you know, when's the wedding? Are we gonna film it on TV? Yada yada yada. And so that's another thing that we're kind of playing along with is whether or not it'll it will air what are you leaning towards i mean and what is it like being on that show and you know your love is is so real but you guys also are so intriguing because of who you are so what's the balance there obviously look i'm we're very private people the jordans and so if it was up to me i think we would do maybe multiple weddings one private for our family and friends and then maybe there's one that's a little more public but uh you know i guess time will tell i guess time will tell now that was them on pablo torres my 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 my, my former colleague at espn great guy by the way contributes to dan levitard show sometimes He's got his own podcast as well he's doing great things always root for my colleagues and contemporary now all of them you know, not the fat bastards. I don't root for people like that. Y'all know what the hell I'm talking about. We ain't stuttering, but I won't mention that. I don't root for the fat bastard, okay? But most of my colleagues I root for, and Pablo Torres is one of them, so I wish him nothing but the best. But they were both, Larza, Pippen, Marcus Jordan, were on his podcast, and you saw what you just saw. This is cause to pause in a lot of people's eyes. How could this be happening? Can I tell you to shut the hell up? Or can I get real and raw about something? A show of hands to any man. Because you see, I'm very, very specific with this. There's a whole bunch of dudes out there that violate all kind of man codes. Like, y'all violate me all the time. Y'all will see me with my woman and you come up to me and start talking to me. You'll be with your woman and leave and, and come trying to talk to me. That's your woman over there. I ain't giving you none. I ain't giving you none. What the hell are you doing leaving your woman for? Priorities, fellas. And if I'm with my woman, I don't want to talk to you. You don't know that? Say hi. Keep it moving. Pass up on a damn picture. Okay? It's not like I'm Michael Jackson or Prince, God rest their soul. Get the hell over it. Watch me on ESPN. You see me with my woman, chill. Hell, you see me with any woman, chill. Could be my sister, could be my daughter, could be my, my aunt, could be anybody. You don't know what the hell is going on in my life and flicking pictures and all of that stuff to show everybody who you're with and stuff, even when you're not taking a picture with me. You don't know who I'm with. Dudes that do stuff like that, show me you ain't used to getting none. You just ain't used to getting none. Because you know better. That's violating man rules. That's one way to do it. This is the other. Why are we looking at Michael Jordan when it comes to who Marcus Jordan is hooked up with? The brother is 32. He ain't two. You can't tell him who to screw around with. You can't tell him who to lay down with. You can make suggestions. You could tell him your preference. You could tell him that you might not want him to be with somebody. But what the hell are you going to do? Cock block? What is Michael Jordan supposed to do? Now, according to TMZ and numerous reports from months ago, when he was, I guess, in France, he articulated he didn't necessarily approve. Marcus Jordan tried to knock that down. Saying that his father was just joking or whatever the case may be. I don't know whether he was joking or not. When I speak to Michael Jordan, I don't ask him such things. Ain't none of my damn business. I ain't paparazzi. I'm his boy. You know this. Number love for you, baby. Come on now. I'm making sci-fi in the house. Cute dog. Rude dog. You know what it is. But what I'm saying is ain't none of my damn business. You don't ask no questions like that. I have been in the presence of Jay-Z and Beyonce on numerous occasions in the past. Do you know not one time that I asked them about each other? Not one time. I assumed she's with him. Usually there's a reason. Case closed. None of my damn business. But to get to Jordan, his son is a grown ass man. He can't tell his son what to do, who to do it with. If his son is looking at Laza Pippen, 
who, by the way, albeit 16 years older, as a 56-year-old, knowing she's 48, I can understand why a 32-year-old would say, yeah, I might want to get with that. It, it makes sense. It, it, it makes sense. Okay? There's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff in Miami. She's one of them. I understand why he would want to hook up with her. So he ain't wrong. He ain't the one that won six championships with Scottie Pippen. That wasn't his teammate and his boy. The son was the son. He ain't got nothing to do with all that. And if she is single and available, even though she divorced in 2021 and they met in 2019 and this friendship was solidified, how I have no idea, I don't know, but we can use our imagination, the two year gap from when she met him to the marriage being dissolved as a divorce, we can make assumptions. Y'all do that. Here's what I'm doing. He a grown ass man. And I have yet to meet a parent that determines who you screw around with. They might tell you what they don't like. Their opinion might have an impact on your thoughts and your beliefs and your feelings long term. But especially when it comes to the fellas. I don't know of any circumstances where a dude wanted to hook up with a honey and said, I can't because my daddy won't like it or mama won't like it. Now, again, maybe not in a long term relationship, but the hookup ain't going to stop. Not in any experience I've ever been told about. So that's Marcus's stuff. Let me get to Scotty, um, to, to, to Michael Jordan. If I hear one of y'all. Throwing shade on Michael Jordan. I swear to God, I'm going to lose it. Now, I know this is the digital airwaves, not necessarily patrolled by FCC or whatever, so I can go the hell off as much as I want to and call you a dumb asshole or a fucking idiot. I could do that, but I'm not. What I'm going to say instead is this. Michael Jordan has nothing to do with the decisions that his son made, you would like his son to follow his daddy's wishes because obviously if you Michael, if you Marcus Jordan and everybody knows you the son of Michael Jordan, you got options. Why did you have to pick that one? I don't know whether the dad had that conversation with the son, but one could easily surmise that it probably took place. But in the end, as Marcus Jordan articulated, Dad can express his opinion all he wants to, but he can't make me do what I don't want to do when it comes to a woman. And so now we got to get into the relationship with Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan has called Scottie Pippen the greatest teammate he has ever had. Michael Jordan has said for the record that he would have never had six championships without Scottie Pippen. Michael Jordan has shown his gratitude to Scottie Pippen over and over and over again. And I can't tell y'all how pissed I was. And y'all saw me months ago on this very podcast when I was going off about Scottie Pippen going off about Michael Jordan because he didn't like how he was betrayed, portrayed in The Last Dance, that docuseries that came out when sports stopped due to COVID and it was a four-month hiatus. And all we had was The Last Dance. And that shit was off the chain. It was must-see TV. And we all know it would not have been if Michael Jordan didn't narrate and participate to the degree that he did. Scottie Pippen got all salty because of how he was portrayed. These are true stories. It was true that you signed a contract that you sent in the sign, that Jerry Reinsdorf warned you not to sign it, that Michael Jordan warned you not to sign it, but you signed it anyway. It was true that you kicked up your sneakers and showed that you was wearing Jordan, begging Jordan to come out of retirement when he was playing baseball. And you were trying to win a championship and you were coming up short because Hugh Hollins robbed you of a call at the Garden and the Knicks ultimately won that series. It was true that you weren't able to get to the conference finals or the NBA finals without Michael Jordan. It was true 
that every damn title you won was with Michael Jordan, with him as the star. Scottie Pippen, one of the most ignorant ass shit. Think. Ooh, let me, let me compose myself. Oh my God. Oh my God. One of the most ignorant statements I've ever heard was when Scottie Pippen was complaining about the last dance. He's like, we, we, we a team. We, we a team. We all the same. Really? You are a team. That's not what I'm saying. We're all the same. Really? Everybody was Michael Jordan? Were you Michael Jordan when Michael Jordan was gone? You was an uh, all-star uh, MVP at the all-star game. You got your team to the semifinals. It was Scottie Pippen that quit because Phil Jackson called the last play against the New York Knicks. I believe it was game three or four. I think it was game four. And he called the last play for Tony Kukoc to take the last shot. And Scottie Pippen was appalled and refused to check into the game. It was Scottie Pippen that had to deal with Bill Cartwright literally crying. Getting on Scottie Pippen, first talking to him on the bench, and then after that, crying in the locker room, talking about how he betrayed the team. He quit on them. That was Michael Jordan? Was that Michael Jordan? Didn't Michael Jordan tell you not to sign that contract? Didn't Michael Jordan say it was your chance to have it as your team? Didn't Michael Jordan, was it Michael Jordan that had the migraine headache in the game seven against the Detroit Pistons in the Eastern Conference Finals before y'all ever won a chip? Wasn't that Michael Jordan? Now, it was you, Scottie Pippen, that defended Magic Johnson, picked him up. Cover, you know, 94 feet, baseline to baseline. After game one, when y'all lost that game one NBA Finals game against the Los Angeles Lakers, and then you took over and defended Magic Johnson because you were 6'9", just like Magic Johnson, and you could appeal his, his vision as a defender unlike any other defender in the NBA could. That is true. But all of those other things came with you too. All of those other things came with you. It wasn't Michael Jordan that did that. And then to top it all off, to sit up there and to provide an indication that after Michael Jordan's father had passed away when he was murdered, to sit up there years later and reveal that you hadn't given him your condolences on purpose. Now, this much I will say. When The Last Dance came out and Scottie Pippen ultimately wrote his book thereafter and he said the things that he said about Michael Jordan, I personally was on the phone with Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan personally told me to go on first take my day job on ESPN and talk about, oh, I didn't know he didn't extend his condolences on purpose. I just thought there was a lot going on and enough people getting in my face and he was respecting me to leave me alone. And not bother me. And he wanted to be there for me with his silence. But he was supportive. I didn't know that he intentionally refrained from extending his condolences over the loss of my father. That he had that level of animosity. That's why there's no coming back for Scottie Pippen. If you know anything about Michael Jordan. You could argue with Michael Jordan. You could tell him how you feel. You could be in his face. You can argue. You can motherfuck him. He can motherfuck you back, which he would do while smoking cigars. He'll do all of that. But the one thing he won't do is hold it against you if you got the guts to tell him to his face and you tell him privately before you ever reveal it publicly. He don't play that. And I can relate because neither do I. And that is Michael Jordan. So I say all of that to say Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen ain't friends unless something happened over the next few months that I don't know about. And again, I didn't ask. I got better things to do with my life, but ask Michael Jordan, how are you, Scottie? Y'all ain't playing no more. I can care less. But let me tell you something. I can't imagine that they're friends. And whether Michael Jordan approves or doesn't approve, he don't owe Scottie Pippen anything. Let's be real. Can we get raw for a second here? It ain't like Michael Jordan screwing around with Lars Pippen. Then that would be different. That would be kind of low. If Michael Jordan was single and he was messing around with Scottie Pippen's ex-wife, who was married to Scottie Pippen from 1997 to 2021, and they got four kids together. If Michael Jordan ended up with Scottie Pippen's ex, then that would be bad. Let's call it what it is. That would be bad. That is not the case. 
His son is his business. And I'm quite sure Michael Jordan never imagined that a woman that used to be married to his former teammate who's 16 years older than his son would want a son. But this is America. Stuff happens. Which brings me to Larsa Pippen. You know, you women get real, real slick sometimes. I love how I see this story trending. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Let me do Shanae. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> Larsa Pippen. What's he doing? What's Michael Jordan doing? Why ain't y'all asking what's she doing? Now, the Marcus Jordan, you ain't got to worry, my brother. I ain't going to disrespect your woman. I would never do that. What I'm simply saying is, why we ain't asking about her? She's the one that was married to Scottie Pippen. Not Marcus. Not Michael. She's the one who had four kids with Scottie Pippen. Not Michael. Not Marcus. I have no doubt that there had to have been along the court over the course of all of those years they played together, a time when her and the kids were around Michael and his kids. Now, let's backtrack. It's 2019 that they met. That's four years ago. He was 28. She was 44. Two consenting adults, fine. But that ain't the first time she met him. How'd that happen? And oh, you were just friends. And I love how people, are, it's like, it, it, it's an accident. It just happened. What well, just happened? It just happened. You just fell in it, huh? Fell in it, on top of it, around it, whatever. I mean, what? It just happened. Really? Really? There's nothing inside of you that went, huh? I really, really like what I see. It's not a crime. It's not a crime. But I love how you ladies don't bring that up. Why are we talking about Michael Jordan? He a grown man, married, had kids before he divorced and remarried, then had twins living his life, minding his business running the Jordan brand, which is worth over $3 billion now. And oh, by the way, he got two kids, two young kids of his own, living his life, minding his business. His son is a grown-ass man. what he do? He's got nothing to do with this. Oh, but he, he, you know, his son wants his dad to be his best man. Well, that's his daddy. That's his dad. It ain't about Michael Jordan wanting to be the best man. It's about him loving his son. He's supposed to love Scottie Pippen more than he loves his son? Who's supposed to come first here? And when Michael Jordan purportedly said no, he doesn't necessarily approve of the relationship. While Marcus Jordan found it funny, Larsa Pippen didn't. Is it possible she didn't find it funny because she was hoping he would approve because she knew how uncomfortable of a situation she may have created? She did not commit a crime. She did not break any laws. She's not trifling or anything like that, like some of y'all would say. But can we at least acknowledge it's uncomfortable for a multitude of people? Because you see, chances are, if she does get married, while Scottie Pippen won't be there, her children will to support their mother. Just like Marcus Jordan's siblings and Michael Jordan's children will be there to support their brother or his son. The only person close to wrong in all of this is Lazar. And I'm not saying she is. To each his own. Happiness is happiness. Life is too short, man. Whatever it takes to be happy. You don't want to be unethical and salacious and amoral. But the bottom line is, 
if you're not really hurting anybody else, go be happy. But if we're going to point the finger of blame anywhere, it ain't with the fellas. Marcus ain't Michael, and Michael ain't involved with Lazar. The person close to something wrong is Laza, depending on how you feel about it. Some people think it's wrong. Some people think it ain't right. Others love cougars, love being cougars. And they are just a round of applause to her. Who knows? But it would be nice for the ladies to stand up. And to point out at least once. Michael and Marcus are actually innocent in all of this. They've done nothing wrong. Marcus don't owe Pat Scottie Pippen nothing. And Michael Jordan, it's not his place to get involved. You express your opinion and you bounce. I don't know of any father who has been able to control and dictate who his son decides to lay up or down or sideways or around with. I don't know of a father who's pulled that off. And that's all I wanted to say about that particular situation. I ain't saying anybody's wrong. But if anybody is wrong, Or no one. But Marcus and Michael, stop. Find somebody better to do. Do your homework. Stop that BS. And if there's anything to feel sorry about with Scottie Pippen, that would be it. Because damn, who the hell wants to be in the news over something like that? You ain't got nothing to do with it. And his name is going through the news. He more popular for that now than he is for his six championships because of what the ex is doing. That's some sad stuff. That's some sad stuff. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith show right here over the digital airwaves of YouTube. By the way, that ain't the only salacious thing I got to get into because there's a former basketball player with a former adult film star as a wife. And he has complaints about, dare I say, some of her proclivities in an effort to support the family. That is a subject that I will tackle as the show progresses. Don't you touch that dial. It's the Stephen A. Smith Show. Score this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. And who wouldn't want a little something extra to celebrate if the team you're rooting for is victorious, you know? And even though we're well into the season, it's not too late to get started. In fact, there's no better time to get in on the action than now. We've seen the early season trends. We know what we're dealing with, and hopefully our bets follow suit. And this app is so easy to use. My friends love FanDuel. They bet spreads, props, totals, all the action they want on the game, and they're able to do so through FanDuel. So visit FanDuel.com slash SAS and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in Arizona, Colorado, Connecticut, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Louisiana, permitted parishes only, Massachusetts, Maryland, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, or Wyoming. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghelp.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit MD 
1-800-GAMBLINGHELP.org in Maryland. Visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia or call 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit GAMBLINGHELPLINEMA.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Welcome back to Stephen A. Smith Show right here over the digital airwaves of YouTube. Um, James Harden was traded to the Los Angeles Clippers. He got what he wanted. Essentially, the Clippers got Nicholas Batum and Marcus Morris and a couple of other people, Kenyon Martin Jr. I think the Philadelphia 76ers got better. I think they got better defensively. I think they deepened their bench. More importantly, the ball gets high, handled, handed to Tyrese Maxey. Let's see what he does um, in concert with the great Joel Embiid. It's that simple. I think that the Sixers are solidified as the third best team in the Eastern Conference because of this deal. But I still think they're slightly below Boston and Milwaukee. And so they're still on the outside looking in when it comes to those two teams. But nevertheless, they improve. Let's see what the future holds. It's really about James Harden, who's now on his fourth team since January 2021. Houston, Brooklyn, Philly, and now the Los Angeles Clippers. Um, James Harden is an all-star. James Harden led the league in assists last year. I'm not sure this is going to work. I want the record to show that I believe that James Harden would have been better off on the Los Angeles Lakers replacing D'Angelo Russell. That's what I believe. Now, granted, he wants the ball. He holds the ball a lot. And that's not something that's going to work when you've got the great LeBron James on the court. But let me ask you this. How the hell is it going to work better with Russell Westbrook? Both of them need the ball. Neither of them are movers without the ball. Okay. They need the ball in their hands to make things happen. How's that going to work out? That's point number one. Point number two is how's it going to work out when it didn't work out with them in Houston? Because it was a personality clash in terms of what they brought together on the court. Off the court, they still boys. But on the court, what are you going to do with that? So that's point number two. Point number three. I understand why the Clippers did it because you're anticipating that Paul George or Kawhi Leonard are going to get hurt. So since one of them, since in all likelihood, one of them is going to get hurt, at least we have a security blanket and a guy like James Harden who can put up buckets and bunches. I understand the thinking. But to me, in order for the Los Angeles Clippers to legitimately have a shot at winning a championship, they all have to be healthy or at least Kawhi and Paul George with either Westbrook or Harden. But if Westbrook and Harden are healthy, if both of them are healthy, who's going to have the ball? Who's going to sit on the bench? Whose minutes are going to be compromised? I mean, Ty Lue's a great coach. If anybody can figure it out, it's him. But I got news for you. It's going to be a bit different. And what a challenge is going to be. And I want to also say this. I'm not like everybody else. I'm not going to point the finger at James Harden like that. I know that James Harden says he was lied to by Daryl Morey. He's probably telling the truth. I also know there's no excuse for him to act the way that he acted in forcing his way out. I also know that this is the third time you forced your way out of a situation. And that kind of baggage gets carried with you wherever you go as a malcontent. And chickens are coming home to roost. It's a bad look. No question about it. But there's one other thing that's on my mind. What if James Harden is not a problem? And Kawhi Leonard and Paul George are healthy. But James Harden loses anyway. He ain't recovering from that. Because if you can't win with James Harden, Paul George, and Kawhi Leonard, nobody's going to blame a healthy Kawhi Leonard. Folks will barely blame a healthy Paul George. They're going to blame James Harden. So after all of this noise and all of this stuff, he better win. You know, wet in the bed in game six, looking like you quit in game seven. Not the first time somebody said that you looked like that in a closeout playoff game. You can't have that kind of stuff going on. Can't have it. And having it will most definitely be to his detriment. Somebody needed to say it. So I'm going to say it. 
You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show right here over the digital airwaves of YouTube. Before I go to break, let me take a moment to congratulate the one and only Irvin Magic Johnson, uh, because according to reports, he is the newest member, the newest member of the billionaire list. Irvin Magic Johnson is now supposedly worth about $1.2 billion. I haven't spoken to Magic Johnson in a while. Congratulations to him, my brother. A great man, a great leader, a great innovator, um, a great motivator. He's accomplished a lot of great things in his life, and I got a lot of love for him. And I always root for him, and I always wish him the best. He's 64 years of age. This list makes him the fourth athlete to earn the billionaire status alongside Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, and LeBron James. That's very elite company. You have to remember that Magic Johnson, his 13-year career, had compiled about $40 million. You would pay different funds back then. Think about it. Magic Johnson, a five-time champion, three-time league MVP, a sure but fire first ballot Hall of Famer that he was, the elite point guard this game has ever seen, made $40 million in his career on the basketball court. Anthony Davis is making that in one season playing for the same franchise he's played for. In one year, Anthony Davis is making what Magic Johnson made in 13 years. 22 million more than Magic Johnson made over 13 years. So what he has been able to accomplish has been utter, it's absolutely positively magnificent. Magic Johnson speaks, he's like E.F. Hutton, we should listen. I hope that he comes on this show one day and gives his words of wisdom espousing his brilliance, educating us all, being a part owner of the NFL, really a discussion about what it takes to be great. Irvin Magic Johnson, the latest former athlete or the latest athlete, period, on the billionaire's list. If that ain't a great accomplishment, I don't know what is. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show right here over the digital airways of YouTube. I told you I wasn't going away, right? I know you get a little bit nervous when you hear Stephen A and OnlyFans.com in the same sentence. Well, here's a tip. You kind of need to be, especially with this next subject that I'm about to tackle. Stick around, don't touch that dial. You're listening live. The Stephen A. Smith Show. Well, maybe not live, but I'm always live. You know how. Back with more in a minute. Get this. In the next minute, I'm going to talk to you about Indeed. And in that minute, 16 hires will have been made on Indeed, according to Indeed Data Worldwide. That's the power of Indeed. Because although there's no I in team, there is one in Indeed. And that's the hiring platform you need to build your team. You can attract, interview, and hire all in one place on Indeed, which gets you ahead of the game. But their tools are more powerful than that. I'm blown away by the stats, like how candidates you invite to apply to your job are three times more likely to apply than others. That's how you go and get who you want. That's how you build your team. Join more than 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash SAS. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash SAS. Just go to Indeed.com slash SAS and support the show by saying you heard about it on this podcast. Indeed.com slash SAS. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Oh, my goodness. Before, well, welcome back to Stephen A. Smith Show right here with the Digital Airways of YouTube. Um, <clears throat> It's very rare I want to get into stuff like this, but it's necessary. And I'm going to tell you why, because there's so much back and forth going on, people talking so much stuff, and it's a damn shame that people aren't capable of getting the big picture. And I don't think it's a lack of capability. I think it's because you don't want to. I think people like trolling. I think people like making fun of people, and people are not just looking at the sincerity and the seriousness of a situation and understanding what a true, true violation really, really is, particularly when it comes to a married couple. 
So take into account former NBA star Joe Smith. Joe Smith, who, who messed up and missed out on a $105 million contract. But that's a long story to get into. But ultimately earned approximately $61 million in his NBA career. Um, for years, he's been married to a lady by the name of Keisha uh, Chavez. Uh, spelled Chavis, but they said the pronunciation is Chavez. If I mispronounced her name, my apologies, but that's what how I heard her name pronounced. Um, and apparently there was a video that was circulating and it's trending because Joe Smith was furious because this individual uh, who was once being advised by the great Alex Rodriguez, who, you know, does business um, with a television show, CNBC, gives advice to a lot of athletes because he's made a lot of money in his career, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and Joe Smith was one of those people he was giving advice to because Joe Smith was on the verge of being broke uh, a few years ago. They've had money issues, et cetera, et cetera. Nevertheless, he recently was shocked and very upset because he found out that his wife secretly behind his back, um, had an OnlyFans account. Um, and when he found out about it, he was not pleased. Before I go any further, look at the exchange between these two up front when Joe Smith first finds out that she has an OnlyFans account. It's stupid, bro. I can't believe I'm sitting here just finding out you got an OnlyFans account. Out of all these years, yo, the disrespect that comes with it, that you couldn't even talk to me before you did it, that's bullshit, yo. That's fucked up, Keys. I'm telling you, yo, that's fucked up. Wait, wait, no, 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 cop, but you're not gonna say fuck me or that's fucked up. It's not what fucked fuck up. You're recording me, what the fuck you doing? <sighs> Listen, it's not fucked up, and we're going to. Up. Okay, look, so. I have an OnlyFans page, and he's mad because he's just now finding out about it. Of course I'm mad I'm just finding but out about it. I'm not doing it with anybody but myself, so why should I have to tell you my choice, my body, my body, my fucking choice? I'm your partner, you're supposed to come to me and talk to Joe, me Joe, I've been talking to you about mad things. I've been asking for solutions to shit. You're not giving me none, so I created one. That's no solution. Not in my book. That's no you solution. Knew, you knew who the fuck I was when you met me. Before. Before. Before, before, yeah, we before, met, yeah, I knew and I that. thought that I would never have to go Man, back to anything yeah, like this again, but unfortunately, but not, no, no, no. that's not the case right after that, now. After that, everything's supposed to change. Everything did change. No, 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 no. Obviously, everything. it hasn't. No, it had to, I had Obviously to do something. It hasn't. You stood out there showing your body. You stood out there doing stuff like this on camera. You act like that's the only thing that I do. I have mad jobs, but they're not facilitating everything that needs to be done. So I got something extra. Only fans be breaking me off. What the Man, fuck? Come on, Keisha, with that. It don't matter what they breaking you off. It's the disrespect that comes with it. What you disrespect? Even, you couldn't come and talk to me about it. Okay, well, we're talking about it now. Because I had so... to find out on the fly. All right, then. But now, okay. No, so, wait. I had to find out on the fly. So now you know. Yeah, now I know. Okay. And so? Whatever. I've been doing what I have to do, period. Like, that's bottom line. Yeah. That's what it is. Now, you see, here's the problem with that video. Because, see, we're going to break it down. The problem with the video is, why the hell is there a video? Why are you having a conversation with your husband, but filming it for the world to see on social media? Why? The same thing that I said about Jada Pinkett. Why? I'm talking about the filming. Remember that time you saw on camera talking to Will Smith and Will Smith said, I really don't appreciate you filming me like this. You know, I've got my own fan base. I got my own life. You know, I, it ain't everybody's business. Would you take me off film? And Jada was like, see how he is, see how he is. What the hell is wrong with you women? And the fellas too who do this, where without anybody's permission or consent, you just decide to start an argument or to 
create friction and tension and literally film it for everybody to see. You're married. It's your business. Why? Now, you, you could say I had an OnlyFans account and that's why he was bitching and moaning. Fine. But that would be about the OnlyFans account. Why are you having a discussion about it for all of us to see? How is that our business? How come your husband can't have a private conversation with you that nobody is around to see or is involved with? Why? Why can't he have that? That's the first part. That's the first part. But the story gets thicker. Because come to find out, Chavez is a former adult actress. We know what that means. Filmed and shared her husband's furious reaction to discovering her OnlyFans account. The clip of Smith furiously confronting Chavez over her OnlyFans account went viral last week. And then they quoted what he said, and you just saw it. Ladies and gentlemen, what's your definition of furious? Because you know how they, you know how they, 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 they stigmatize black men. Him being upset and saying that's effed up, blah, 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 blah. He didn't put his hands on her. What he's doing is having an argument with his wife. How come y'all didn't say she was furious? She was cussing at him. I got to do what I got to do and all of this other stuff and throwing his business out in the street about how he wasn't listening and he wasn't handling stuff. So I had to go out and do what I had to do. Why wasn't she labeled angry? Why wasn't she labeled a bit cantankerous? Why wasn't the word furious accorded to her? But I digress. Despite revealing that they're currently living separately following the discovery, guess what this girl did? She decides to go and speak to TMZ on camera. Before I go any further, look at where she takes this. Look, here it is. See for yourself. Yes, the first question is, where's how Joe? Are you, how are you where, guys doing? Where's Joe? Um, he's pretty pissed off with me. So he's been, um, I think he's at his sister's house. He's not talking to me right now. So, yeah. Keisha, how long ago, obviously we saw in the video that Joe's saying he had no idea that you had this account. How long, how long is the account? Have you had the page? Um, I've had the page for at least over a year. Um, it's on my Instagram and my LinkedIn, but that's what happens when you don't pay attention to your wife, period. Um, and, you know, he has a friend that he's been entertaining and she decided that, you know, she wants to really put a wrench, a bigger, you know, wedge in our relationship. So she went digging around my page and was like, oh, do you know that she has this? And I blew it from that. I mean, it's no secret Joe's financial issues, you know, mm -hmm. and... I have always made a good life for myself, you know. Um, before I met Joe, I was living overseas in Europe and I had established myself as a singer, you know, and I came back here, you know, thinking that with his persona and who he was, once we got together and I found out who he was, that it would only take off, you know, other things. But, you know, not everybody's hustle and drive are the same. And depression is a serious thing also. So, you know, I've been just like, you know, supporting and dealing and going through his trials and tribulations with him. Um, I've started several businesses, you know, I've, I've been doing a lot. Like, and I just was, I just figured out, like, figure out. I have a home in Cape Verde I'm trying not to lose and a, and a roof over here we're trying to maintain that we almost got kicked out of. So I just kicked in the drive and did what I had to do. You see, let me tell y'all something. I promise y'all this. The good news coming down the pike in the future is that the divorce rate is going to come considerably down. And the reason it's going to come considerably down is because fellas just ain't going to get married. We ain't dealing with this shit. So wait a minute. 
you can go behind the brother's back. Literally showing your ass to the world. It's not an exaggeration. It's not an engagement in hyperbole. It's not being, you know, uh, uh, trying to be intriguing. Or this is what she's doing. And literally going on TMZ, I got to do what I got to do. Implying that she had her standards. Letting you know, well, I was doing this in Europe. And I came back to America. And once I realized what he was, I thought about what we could do together. So in other words, you was with him because of the money. You was with him because you thought he had more. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, but especially ladies. What happened to better or for worse? For better or for worse? What happened to for richer, for poorer? In sickness and in health? Until death do us part. What happened to that? What happened to that? You see, what we're not talking about enough is that when we're talking about rules and a code of ethics and principles that you're supposed to apply, we're not talking about you as a woman and what you're supposed to do with a man. We're talking about what you're supposed to do with your man. The man you chose, the man you swore you loved, the man you dedicated yourself to, the man you vowed all of those things towards. Whether it's at a church or in some kind of ceremonial place with a pastor or somebody else espousing the vows, you echo them. You're supposed to live by them. But see, that's the damn problem in this country. Especially in this country, if if not throughout this world in this day and age. Y'all don't give a damn. Again, this is not a conversation about what she's feeling. This is not a conversation about what she's, how she's acting. And the brothers, I'm ashamed of the brothers that's like, yo, man, he knew who he married. He knew who he married. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He said it was supposed to change. Once we made this commitment, didn't she say it changed? Didn't she say, but you know what I'm accustomed to and you know what I'm looking for. So when we didn't have, I had to do what I had to do. Didn't she imply that? What happened to doing without? What happened to understanding that you know what? You might not be able to afford a mansion. It might be just a regular old house. You might not afford four cars. You might only could afford two. You might actually have to go to the Cheesecake Factory for dinner instead of Morton Steakhouse or, 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 or something like that. You might have to do that. What happened to all that? I thought you loved him. I thought he's the guy you want to spend the rest of your life with. I thought he was that dude. For better or worse, richer for poorer. How about this one? Because you knew who you were. And you knew that you gave your body up for money, assuming that's what you did, right? How about the fact that he loved you anyway? Married you anyway? Gave himself to you anyway? He deserved that? We ain't talking about your decisions in terms of what you choose to do to make money. We're talking about you publicizing it. If you notice me, I keep going back to that. You're going to live your life, live your life. I'd have never married your ass. I can tell you that much. I'd have never married you. You know, porn stars and all the adult film stars, whatever words you want to use. I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have married you. But that's me. Hell, I wouldn't have dated you, but that's me. He obviously was cool with it because you sold him. On the fact that you did what you had to do. You was one of those women that Chris Rock talked about. I'm just doing this so I could pay for my education or I could pay my bills. Remember that? Remember that stand up that Chris Rock did? I'm just, I'm just here. I'm, just, I'm not trying to do this. Alone. I'm just trying. I'm trying to get through school. Which is possible. But the point is. He married you. Maybe you shouldn't do it. Maybe you should. That's y'all business. Maybe he should have married you. Maybe he shouldn't. That's y'all business. 
the one thing that I want people to gravitate towards universally when it comes to all of this. How about a wife keeping their marital business private and the husband's? That's my only point in all of this. My only point in all of this, you started the minute he found out why was he on video? Why are you telling the world and showing the world how your husband feels? Hasn't he been humiliated enough? Then you go on TMZ and not only do you humiliate him by showing how he reacts to knowing that you got an OnlyFans account, but then you double down and turn around and go on national TV on TMZ and talk about you got to do what you got to do. He knew what you were doing and he knew what he married. And y'all, and it's no secret of his financial difficulties. So now you want to humiliate him. Forget the fact that people already knew it already. Why'd you have to double down and remind everybody? I totally forgot about that. I wasn't walking around here thinking about Joe Smith, but I did today because you put his name out there. You his wife. He trusted you. And you go sit up there and put his business on front street like that. You can't keep something private and handle it. Is it possible? Huh, Keisha? You went on TMZ for a reason. Because going on TMZ attaches a face to the name, elevates the profile, and puts you in a position where, dare I say, you'll get more fans on OnlyFans. Was that the objective? Because if it was, isn't that selling your husband out? Ain't that selling him out? Ladies, when we gonna focus on that? Again, live and let live. If that's what you do to get money, girl, do your thing. I'm not calling you names. And I don't disrespect you like that. And I'm certainly not going to disrespect Joe Smith, who I've always liked and respected. But what I'm saying to you is, you couldn't keep that to yourself? What you going to tell us next? Who you with? And how much better or worse than they are? they are than him? What you going to do next to humiliate the brother? And ladies, when y'all going to step up and tell these these ladies to stop humiliating and emasculating the dude? You don't want him. You don't want him. You want to do other things. You want to do other things. He cheating, you cheating, whatever. Why is it our business? That is the point of this discussion. Nothing else. Why is it our business? You know the answer. Because you're trying to do business. And you willing to put your husband's business out in the world. So you can generate more business. If that is what marriage is in this day and age to all the ladies out there. Good luck finding a husband. You'll need it if you can't even do something as simple as respecting his privacy and keeping y'all business, y'all business. You can't do that. There's no hope for unions in the future of this country. If not this world. Take it from me. It ain't hard to do. Because I don't know a man alive that feels any different than me right now. On this specific point. Only good news about it is for Jada Pinkett. You got fans, evidently. They like telling their business, too. This is Stephen A. signing off. I'm out, y'all. I'll talk to y'all later on in the week. I'm too disgusted to continue.